Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, I'll be talking about Playwright MCP server from Israel Automation. And we're going to talk about where exactly this Playwright MCP server is going to fit in in your everyday workflow while you do automation testing. And is Playwright MCP server is a replacement to the test automation that you do with the Playwright using the library? Or is it a replacement to even Selenium automation testing tool that you have been writing all these days using frameworks and things? So where exactly does this Playwright MCP server is going to fit in your workflow. That is something that we are going to be discussing. And the next thing we're going to talk about is some of the new feature that is introduced in this new release that we have added. Something like the Playwright Get Visible Text and the Playwright Get Visible HTML and also save as PDFs and also uh, drag and drops and things of that nature. So these are things which is there already but it is now in the version uh, 1.0.3 which I have not really discussed and I wanted to discuss about it. It is going to show you how you can really improve the workflow or maybe better job in doing this test automation using this Playwright MCP server with these kind of tool with a bit of a prompt fine tuning that you have to do. That is exactly what we are going to be discussing. So let's first talk about the smaller part, which is the feature part, because it's very, very straightforward. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to our cloud desktop over here. And I have told uh, here in the prompt saying, navigate to this particular website and perform a login operation and check if the login is successful. Before performing any operation, try to understand the page HTML structure and then perform the operation to reduce the false operation on the UI elements. And then close the browser once done. This is what exactly I'm trying to say over here. I can also say save the page as PDF if you wanted to, or maybe uh, try to uh, navigate uh, to the website in a in a in a like a mobile mode. I can also say all those things, but I just want to keep things very, very straightforward in this particular uh, prompt. And I'm asking this question over here. The moment I ask this question, you can see that it's going to open the Playwright um, uh, and navigate tools for us. And then you will notice that the, the website is being navigated for us over here, uh, like how it is saying. And now it's saying now I will take the screenshot to see if the page looks like, uh, and then I will examine the HTML structure. See that now it is calling this Playwright get visible HTML for me. Uh, and now it is uh, analyzing the page and it is going to perform the login operation. See, every time before it performs any operation, it is going to get the visible HTML page and then perform the operation. Because you can also see that the uh, Playwright MCP server has the uh, ID of the username, password and the login button to perform a better work. Because if you remember earlier days while we were not having this particular feature, the Playwright MCP server used to just do based on the namings and then it will perform the operation on the UI. But right now it is going to first of all understand the, uh, the HTML structure before it performs any of these operation. And look at that now it has performed all the operation for us and the test has got passed over here. So this is one way of how you can make use of uh, the Playwright MCP server of his automation to perform these operations in a more relevant fashion. So this is pretty cool. So this is one of the feature that we have introduced in version 1.0.3. Now we are in version 1.0.5. So this feature is already there if you are already using it for a long time. If you have not used it, please try to use these prompts, which will make your life even more easier. And you will not get any false negative operation uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Playwright MCP server when it performs any operation. That's one thing. The next thing is how the Playwright MCP server is being used by the test engineers and developers. Is it a replacement for the, uh, the Playwright or the Selenium that we have been using all these days? If you remember, Playwright is and completely big library. So if you're just going to go and put this playwright um, uh, dot, let's say just playwright dot dev. So this library has got all the bells and whistles. So it's available uh, for different language bindings. And you can also use this playwright uh, for performing all the different operation. Not something that you can actually uh, do from the uh, Playwright MCP server because the Playwright MCP server is built on the top of this tool, this library itself. So this library has got more feature than the Playwright MCP servers itself. 
And also, this Blade MCP server uh, library can be extended within our code. We all know that we can write like a framework and then we can uh, perform even many different operations which the Blade MCP server can't. And the Blade MCP server runs uh, with the power of the large language model, like a reasoning models. But over here, you don't even need to have any of those things. It can just directly run on your local machine without costing you anything because it's all running uh, within your local machine and there is no need for large language models and things. Another thing is there is a confusion with people saying this large language model actually is going to consume a lot of tokens because uh, just if you're going to use the Plate MCP server to generate the code, then it doesn't make any sense because Plate MCP server. Uh, if you're just going to use for the code generation, then you can use the code gen tool, which is available within the playwright itself. So why can't you just use that? So if you just go and search for uh, code gen, see this one, this is the code generator operation, which is already there in playwright, which will help you generate the code on the fly. So you don't really have to use this feature to use for uh, to generate the code in the playwright MCP server, because that is not the point there, right? So how do we actually squeeze or maybe use this Blade MCP server within our development workflow and how exactly companies and people are really using this Blade MCP server. Well, developers are actually using the Blade MCP server more than the test engineers itself. So if you wanted to do some sort of component test or maybe if you want to do a quick UI test of your application uh, while uh, not writing a lot of different codes to make that operation happen, they use Playwright MCP server to, different, uh, to perform this operation. And similarly, if you are a test engineer and you wanted to see a specific UI element in tracks and work as expected, you use Playwright MCP server for that matter. And if you have a very, very simple test operation without logging in, or maybe if you wanted to see whether all the different combinations of the test are executable with your uh, UI component, you just put everything in the command, all the data and ask the Playwright MCP server to, to, to navigate and perform all these operations, Playwright MCP server is going to do that for you. So all of these, you don't even have to leave the IDE to perform this operation because you can use the power of Cursor or the uh, the VS Course GitHub Copilot uh, or even the Klein and all these, uh, these tools can do this operation without you leaving out of the IDE. It can do things for you out of the box. That is the power of it as well. So if I'm going to open the cursor IDE uh, and you can see over here within the cursor, we have this settings uh, over here, the cursor settings, uh, and we have got this MCP tools and you can see that we have got the playwright over here. So if I go and hit edit, you can see that this is the playwright MCP server that we have got. So if you just put the Playwright MCP server uh, or configure this MCP server over here, and then you can just use the uh, the Playwright MCP server in the chat. Uh, and then if I'm just going to open the tab over there. And now if I'm going to ask any of the question from here, let's say you're going to be building an application and you wanted to test that particular uh, application's feature, you just go and ask in the chat side, and guess what? The Playwright MCP server is going to automatically kick in and it's going to perform the operation because you have already configured the Playwright MCP server within the cursor IDE. So this is the place where the Playwright MCP server is going to really fit in because you don't necessarily have to do or write a lot of codes to perform this operation. Playwright MCP server is going to do that for you. And similarly, if you're going to be uh, testing a very, very simple database operation, then you can use the MCP database server to perform this operation. So, so exactly that is how we use the MCP server, not for the full-fledged end-to-end testing with the, uh, with the framework level, uh, like how you can do with the Playwright or Selenium, but MCP server is mainly used to perform a very simple operation. Or maybe some complex operation based on the prompt, like how you design, but it is something that you can even write very easily with the uh, with your code. But you, if you want to do something repeated and also you wanted to do it quickly, instantly get it done, MCP server is the way to go instead of you writing everything from the scratch. That is how we use the Playwright MCP server instead of uh, using it like an automation framework or any library replacement. Hope it clears your questions and also hope it clears where you can use the Playwright MCP server. That is the real purpose that I wanted to create this video. And also, I wanted to show you the feature that we have introduced in the Blade MCP server, which is something that you just saw over there, the get 
uh, visible HTML, which is, which is quite amazing. So that's it, guys. That's about this particular video. It's a very short video. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video. Catch you in the next one.